and welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, October 4th, 2016. I'm Leanne McAdoo, joined by Owen Schroyer and the rest of the InfoWars crew. We want to say thank you so much for joining us for this very special live edition where we are going to cover the vice presidential debate. It should be very riveting. What do you think? <laughs> Well, we'll see. Most people have never even heard of either of these two. Exactly. We'll see if that changes after tonight. I hope that um, I don't expect either one of them to talk too much about policies of either one of them. Nobody really cares. So I'd like to see Mike Pence just to go ahead and take the gloves off and go right after Hillary Clinton. Yeah. I think that would be beautiful. Ask the questions that nobody is asking of Hillary Clinton uh, thus far in any of her alleged press conferences uh, or the last debate like we saw. No one was checking her. So maybe Pence will you know, pivot from um, I'm sure they're going to go after him with uh, some things that Trump has said. Hopefully he'll be able to pivot back to the issues or pivot to taking down Hillary Clinton. So we are all in this together. Now, all of us are kind of, you know, thinking, is this going to be like paint, watching paint dry, or is this going to be interesting? Let's not forget, this is like a really contested election. These two men are a heartbeat away from the presidency, as they say. Hillary Clinton is like on her deathbed, uh, being wheeled around like weekend at Bernie's. And of course, Donald Trump, you know, he's two years older than Hillary Clinton, seems to be in perfectly great health, but he's been getting death threats left and right from all over social media. So, I mean, these guys are actually pretty important. It's probably one of the most important uh, vice presidential debates that we should be paying attention to. So, like I said, we're all in this together. We are going to give you the phone number here in a minute to, um, we're gonna take your phone calls and we wanna hear what you have to say. What do you think about uh, Alex Jones telling Trump he needs to go visit Haiti straight away? Um, or, you know, what do you think about this upcoming debate? But I kind of want to go around. Let's take a little tour of the uh, Central Texas Command Center. I want to find out what everyone else thinks. Um, what's the big to do tonight? What do they expect? What kind of curveballs do they think are going to be thrown their way from tonight's debate moderator? Uh, is anybody ready back there? I know we've got Darren McBreen in the building. David Knight is here. Of course, Margaret Howell um, and the rest of the crew. So... Do you think that um, Pen, like they're going to call out Pence or uh, Kane on his flip flopping? Because as we're seeing, you know, this is Hillary Clinton is like master flip flopper, but Tim well, Kane is like I mean, following in her footsteps. Yeah, I don't know if the moderator is going to be as biased as we've seen at the presidential debates. In fact, I would I would imagine the moderator will try to keep this as milk toast as possible. That's how both of these vice presidential candidates are. That's how these um, presidential candidates like their vice presidential candidates to be so that they don't have to worry about too much. Assassination, the right. Right. Uh, <laughs> but no, but that is an interesting point. I mean, perhaps, you know, these two vice presidential candidates are more risk of being assassinated or, or you know, dying in Hillary Clinton's case than we've seen in the past. But, you know, there, there are things that I found in Mike Pence's past that I wouldn't be shocked if we were going to have a bias moderator to mm -hmm. try to call him out on. Um, his climate change uh, denial essentially would be one of them. Um, things he's talked about in his past. He's been a member of the Tea Party uh, before. He's tried to defund Planned Parenthood. These are the type of things we like to see, or we do see biased moderators go after conservatives on. So we'll see if they try to do anything like that. Right. And of course, isn't it interesting how the new thing is climate change and how uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was actually just at the South by South mm. lawn? They are saying, if you don't believe in climate change and you don't believe in science and facts, and it's like, dude, well, he's a well known scientist. Everybody, I mean, he's, a, he's a scientist, isn't he? <laughs> nobody Leonardo? is saying the climate, the climate has he, always changed. Guys, it's, he wrote his in his private jet there. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah he that's has where he the always carbon, takes his private jet. Actually, he has a carbon footprint worse. of a small country. It's even worse. I'm pretty sure that to the last event that Leo spoke at, not only did he fly on his jet, he flew like 30 of his friends out there too. <laughs> So there was a whole party, a whole whole carbon footprint party before Leo went up there and uh, went ahead and told you that climate change is the biggest risk to your life. That, that's right. That's right. You guys are using too much resources, not the rich people. We get to do whatever we want. You have to live in your coffin apartment. You can't have air conditioning. And turn in, in your summer. guns, too, You can't Rob. have heat in the winter. You, you only get a smart car. car, which is about this big. And, and then it's not going to be able to have it. You're not going to be able to drive it. Right. You're you're having, you haven't given me your gun yet, Rob. Give me your gun. Well, Give exactly. it up, Mr. Oh. Mrs. Hey, America. you don't know if I have any guns. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but but that's where it's all going, and and you have these elites running around just lecturing us on how we have to live and how we're bad because we just want you know a piece of the uh, American dream. And you know what? Right. To to go back on something that you said about Haiti and uh, Alex Jones' suggestion to Trump today, I thought it was a great suggestion. I think it would be very powerful for for Donald Trump to fly down there on his plane, mm -hmm. spend a day down there, go around with the people, uh, see the destruction. It does look like. We're going to see more destruction there with the Hurricane Matthew passing through. So, hey, who knows? Maybe the Clinton Foundation wants to go down there and launder a couple more billion dollars out of Haiti. <laughs> no, I, I think it, Hillary's it, afraid to show her face there. I well, mean, I don't know. She cannot show her face. They right. will attack her. Dan, right? you've They're done. You've extremely done. Extremely angry with Clinton's, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton and, and even the Bushes. Because remember, this was the, the Bush and Clinton foundations together working together to completely rape the island of Haiti. Haiti. Mm -hmm. Right, and they've called they've called her out on that, and uh, I know we have a video. I don't know if we got it queued up uh, for tonight's show, but where the the president there of Haiti is actually calling out to Donald Trump, saying, "Hey, we'll we'll back you, we'll join you if you ask Hillary Clinton straight up, put her on the spot. What did she do with all of the billions of dollars that people all around the globe donated?" to help the people of Haiti, like what, two something, two percent of that went to them? Well, I actually talked to um, some uh, Haitian nationals when I was in New York. They were protesting Hillary Clinton at the debate at Hofstra, and they actually did not like Donald Trump. They had complete, obviously, disdain for Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. They were out there protesting them, but they didn't really like Donald Trump. But that's an interesting point. You know, if Donald Trump goes down there, maybe he kind of opens his arms to the Haitian community. Maybe he sheds more light on the Clinton Foundation and what they did down there. Well, God uh, bless him. I mean, him, Darren, you, you filed reports. I mean, you know about the uh, absolute plundering of the wealth down there, the Clinton Foundation in Haiti. Well, and I found the exact opposite. I found a lot of Haitian protesters who indeed support Donald Trump. And a lot of that is, is because of the very reason is they got screwed over so badly, you know. Right. They and, know uh, what we're talking billions and billions of dollars. And remember, Clinton, both the Clintons. Hillary and Bill were on television telling people, look, we need blankets, we need food, we need we need your help. Please call this number, 188, and they give out a toll-free phone number. And millions of people, because, look, Americans were, were you know, were very giving people, were, were generous, and a lot of people were very compassionate and concerned, and, you know, we sent our money. I called. I don't think I gave to the Clinton Foundation, but I remember the telethons. Mm -hmm. $25 here, $50 all across the nation, and that money never got to the Haitian people. Right. Uh, oh, like 2%, and that was so much money yeah. that people That's That's the kind of people we're dealing with, you know. With that money. All right, we've mm -hmm. got the call number up on the screen. We are going to be taking your phone calls both before and after the debate. The number 1-877-789-2539. Let's go ahead and call in. We want to know, what do you think about, uh, d should Trump go to Haiti? What do, what do you think they're going to call uh, people out on here with the debate? What do you think are some of the issues that they should be focusing on? Uh, let's try to keep these, you know, election specific here with the call in. Um, but le let's go ahead and go to Margaret Howell. I know she's in the studio. What do you think is going to happen in tonight's debate, Margaret? You've always got a good take on things. All right, well, I'm getting a little technical difficulty there, so we're going to come right back to Margaret in just a minute. But I let's go to, you know, some of the things that I am hoping that people kind of latch on to with Tim Kaine. So right before Hillary Clinton announced who her VP pick was going to be, Kaine is out praising the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Then all of a sudden, after he gets picked, he's like, oh, well, you know, I could change my mind on the TPP. You'll recall Hillary Clinton this, did this exact same thing. She was calling it the gold standard. And then when she was like getting serious about running for president, she backed, backtracked on that, said, yeah, well, I helped to draw it up, but now I don't think it's such a good deal. Um, Tim Kaine hiked tuition as governor, even though now he claims to be a champion for affordability. Tim Kaine wants to ban 15 round clips and hold gun dealers liable for misuse of firearms. So here, just like Hillary Clinton, we have people who are actively campaigning on taking away your rights. That includes your First Amendment right, because you'll uh, recall uh, Hillary Clinton wants to take down anyone uh, that's part of the mythical alt-right. Um, Tim Kaine agrees. He says the views of Alex Jones and the alt-right cannot be tolerated. 
Ah, uh, because, you know, obviously he's unaware of the First Amendment. But these are just a few of the scandals. Um, he also went on to defend Hillary Clinton on her email scandal. Um, he said, you know, Clinton's being honest when she answers her questions about the email practices. And, of course, they called him out saying, I think at the time it was like 247 days since Hillary Clinton had held, uh, held a press conference. And Tim Kaine said, well, she's given one, not none. I need to correct you. She has given one, not none. And it's like, no, that wasn't even a press conference. She just allowed uh, herself to be in the presence of reporters while she spoke at them. And a they controlled did, event. Yeah, they weren't allowed to ask her any questions. So it was just a total joke. And so he's really going to have to be selling people at tonight's debate on, hey, vote for Hillary Clinton, whereas Pence is going to have to be um, probably fighting off a lot of the personal attacks that, that are going to be coming at him based on, hey, we'll try to convince people to vote for your candidate, Donald Trump. So it should be pretty interesting. I don't think it's going to be as paint dryingly boring as we think. Well, I'm not sure. Again, it'll be interesting to see if the moderator has any bias. But another similarity I saw between Clinton and Kane, and I actually don't have the story here. I'd have to double check this. But I'm pretty sure I saw a story that, uh, like Clinton, Kane has defended um, rapists in court. Wow. Yeah, and that was a story. Again, I, I you know I don't have the Birds story in of front a of me, so we'd have hey. to we'd have to double check that. I don't want to. I'm not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure I saw that story. But it doesn't shock me that Cain is the same type of politician. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah, right yeah. There was. That I thought political? I saw that. So yeah, so you know, Tim Cain and Hillary Clinton have a lot in common, and I think the reason why Clinton went with Cain is because he doesn't really have much. You know, as, he's soft on the criminal on criminals and like Hillary and he doesn't Clinton. have much of a background. Most people haven't heard of this guy. Right. You know, there's not much people. Well, he was head out. of the DNC for a while. I mean, he's definitely got some power right there in in Washington, kind of like a kind of like a um, the House of Cards guy. Kind of. This is the of, real House of Cards. Yes. I mean, we, we are really witnessing it in it. real yeah. time. It's crazy. Um, I'm thinking that Margaret Howell, we're ready to go to Margaret Howell. I would love to hear what you think is going to happen in tonight's debate. There's Margaret. Look, the bottom line is, <laughs> let's just hope that Kane, you know, flip-flops like he usually does, Leanne. You know, he's pro-life, then he's pro-choice. He's anti-gay marriage, then he's pro-gay marriage. You know, he really can't keep it straight for very long. And uh, it's about catching him in a contradiction tonight. That's what it is. But if you guys remember, Hillary Clinton in 2008, he, she called Tim Kane a terrible choice for vice president. She said that Obama if he picked Kane, had a one in eight chance of winning the presidency. So what the heck changed between 2008 <laughs> and uh, seven and a half years later? He magically is is fine now. Wow, and that's so that's really interesting angle there. And that's what a lot of people are saying is that Kane is going to be just like how Obama said of Hillary. Um, back in the day that he's going to say anything and do nothing to get elected. Just like she is. She'll right. say anything. Yeah, so they, they are the same. And wow, I, I had totally, um, completely that was wiped from my mind that he had actually been touted as VP in the past. This is like the House of Cards. What is happening? Mm -hmm. Recycling the same garbage over and over. So was Evan Bayh. He was a he was a contender along with Kane in 2008. But what has Kane done politically except lay low and lay under the radar until it was his time to be a VP pick again? Nothing. Right. That's well. That's, that's probably scary. what he was doing. I mean, and that's he's how like they, that's trying not they, to mess up. Well, Andy knows it's exactly. a great time to get in because Hillary Clinton. A lot of people. This is why Can't a lot of people her. are actually excited about. You know, they're like, fine. It's Hillary Clinton. She's sick. Her health isn't that great. Whatever. But then we'll be then we'll have Kane. He'll be our president. Like they're actually voting, thinking that she's gonna die, and at least they'll have Kane and not Trump. Like what? That's a good way madness. to go about, you know, your vote in this upcoming election. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna vote for Clinton because I think she's gonna die. <laughs> so you actually have a sect of voters that are thinking this way. They're gonna vote for Hillary Clinton because they don't like any of the candidates that they think Kane is the best guy and Clinton's <laughs> gonna die. Wow. Right. The 2016 election. We oh. are, I feel like we are pretty screwed. Mm -hmm. um, well, Margaret, thank you so much. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of take it back a little bit, take it back a few hours to the wee hours of this morning when we were all waiting for the uh, WikiLeaks that wasn't. We all actually got Wiki rolled 
You were there, I was, a I part was of this rolled. epic um, yes. moment in time. So, give us, you know, a little synopsis, brief synopsis of what what that well, was like. You know, and here's the thing about <laughs> it too, because obviously we, you know, we expected there to be a big um, WikiLeaks, you know, email drop or something like that, and we didn't get it. We didn't get it. We sat up here, and more than anything, it was like we couldn't hear what he was saying. We couldn't hear the questions. It was some like coffee table. Like I felt like I was in the basement at some poetry <laughs> reading. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Who bought that TV? And we sat here and we waited and we waited. We didn't get anything. It ended up being five in the morning and me and Alex ended up having Just some, like some fun up here. Downward spiral. Well, yeah. let's go ahead um, and play our first clip from last night. The wiki highlight of Assange talking about, you know, well, we don't release these things at three in the morning. <laughs> I know this. I've, I've seen the internet and I understand that there's enormous expectation uh, in the United States. Uh, yeah, there's enormous expectation. Uh, oh, part of that expectation will be part of the answer. It's built up by him. Um, Here we go. You should understand that uh, if we're going to make a major publication uh, in relation to the United States uh, at a particular hour, we don't do it at 3 a.m. Uh, that's something. Uh, we for, don't do it at 3 a.m. Um, what this is like a, a, a it is a troll to get us to tune into the WikiLeaks so these idiots can get on TV with their hair sticking up. He just admitted it. We don't do it at 3 a.m. Oh my God! And it's old Hillary, I guess. They just tweeted that out. WikiLeaks is trolling the world. But I put her a link. He actually said that, or did you tweet that? I just tweeted that. Uh, it's happening, right? He just said we don't release this uh, at 3 a.m. Uh, it's, it's actually 5 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So what is this, a ceremony? It's all 10 years and they have a bunch of weird women up there. I mean, I thought the lawyer was good. We're completely independent. We're not narcissistic at all. But did you see me in the mirror and all the ladies that love me? Uh, or, uh, Look at our high quality broadcast. Uh, if you can make out a single word of it, you are a genius. But nonetheless, nonetheless, the material that WikiLeaks is going to publish before the end of the year uh, is of a significant. Before the end of the year? Yeah, he's he's made a whatever. deal! Before the election, Jack! 34 days! 34! Uh, Private pile! 34! 34, Private Pile! What is that? It's a damn jelly donut! And why don't we have jelly donuts? Because you are a disgusting liberal fop! <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the unedited late night Alex Jones got to love it. That's why we love you, Alex. <laughs> That's why we love you. <laughs> well, I was cracking up all day now we're gonna play another highlight here <laughs> from the this has gone viral rob do actually said that his son was in middle school that it was going around middle school uh the vine of alex jones talking about this wikileaks which is just incredible that you have middle schoolers talking about this wikileaks thing but this <laughs> let's just go ahead and play the clip <laughs> I mean, we're tired of it. We're done. But WikiLeaks has done a lot of great work in their past, so I still give them an A+. Plus. Uh, but we're teleprompter free. We're going to be honest about what we see and what happens. This was a huge buildup. The media will make a big victory out of this. Oh, it was supposed to be this big release, and he didn't give anything out. Ah, it's all crap. So thanks a lot, Assange. Uh, really, thanks for nothing. Um, Mr. Schroyer? I'm still trying to figure out what we just witnessed here. Uh, a complete you win this hammered sh a complete two-bit hack job um they can't even get quality audio they can't get quality video they can't coordinate enough and, goes, and by the way those of you i loved how i know i was gonna give you hardcore info and said i would but i'm sorry now it's not the time and it was like and by the way if you expect me at 3 a.m to give anything you're dumb that was the tell <laughs> but by my book the, 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 these sociopaths and people they always gotta stab me in the back like and just say, oh, I didn't imply this was happening. I didn't set you up. No, by the way, if you thought you get it at 3 a.m., you were wrong. Ha, 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 ha. He has, he has 
he has just, he's really hurt himself. I mean, let me tell you, I know how the web works, how the world works. You have really done it, buddy boy. Well, we're, I you mean, better release it all within 12 hours or boy. you're done. We've been wiki rolled. That's what they're saying on Twitter. Wiki rolled. Ricky We've been wiki rolled. Wiki rolled. Instead of Rick rolled. Who bought the TVs? Tell me that. Move, bitch. Get, get out the way. way. Get out the way, bitch. Get out the way. Move, bitch. Get out the way. I mean, you get out the way, man. Well, and that's what I'm saying. You I think you bitch does? You think you roll does? Yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Assange. I thought we were in an info war. I don't know what these guys were doing up here. I'm tonight. rolling Hillary. I'm the dark heart. We ain't backing down. Just because you're a fake chump, don't think we are. That was soft. Get ready. That was soft. I'll double down because of this. I won't be associated with you. Now we have to Who make up. the TVs? Tell me that. We have to Better make up. Better not be in front of my we have to make up for the lack of energy that came out of this production, whatever this crap was. They're sitting around a coffee table. Are you kidding me? You can't even get a quality production? You're trying to change the world? Who bought them TVs? Tell me that. Jeez. Move, bitch. Get out the way. Get He's out still the on. Way, I said that to Hillary. That's He's a still on song. Get out guns. the way, bitch. Get out the way. I'm sorry. It is 4.33 in the morning. I can do that like this now. I, have, I, I actually like when you sing um, Ludacris at 4 I, I, I'm in the so depressed. I have to play Carl the Cut. There it is. That's Carl the Cut. Oh. oh, my goodness. Well, there he was, the dark heart, Alex Jones, who was rolling Hillary Clinton. And then there's actually there's <laughs> there's actually videos you can find them on our Twitter accounts that people actually played the ludicrous song. Yes, it has now that. been set to music that is epic, gone viral. Make sure you retweet that out to all your friends. Guys, I was amazed that my son comes home and says, "Dad, what did Alex say last night about WikiLeaks? Everybody's talking about it at school, and I don't know what's going on." And <laughs> and then I showed him. Actually, I went and showed him this, and uh, that from at Matt Bender the and it's to the ludicrous song. <laughs> but it it's it's gone viral and it's amazing that middle school kids are now talking about WikiLeaks. You know, Alex right. Jones has that power now to make middle schoolers talk about WikiLeaks and actually, you know, he kind of fooled them into think, talking about it because he put this meme one out there and people are like, "Oh, what's this about?" So some people, maybe 20%, 30% who watch that are going to dig a little bit more and see what's really going on. And you know, they'll discover what WikiLeaks has done and kind of what they did to us last night, which was definitely an epic worldwide troll event that they uh, did to us all. The Wiki World. Yeah, it was very very funny. I actually woke up about 4:15 in the morning and caught nice. I caught that that whole downward spiral that you, you guys were on concert. yeah it was i think i tuned in right at the most opportune moment so that was uh really epic um should we go ahead and take a, a phone call or something do we have a do we have an eta on the uh, jones video um where he's calling on um okay all right well let me know when that comes in so i'm gonna go ahead and take a phone call from garrett in dallas uh you want to talk about the, the the debate tonight and your predictions Yes. Um, you know what? The thing is that I, I can already see it. Tim Kaine will be the most, will just be, will, I can't even imagine how predictable it's going to be. He's going to say, uh, Pence, you know, you used to be a Trump supporter. He deny global warming. You're a racist, but you said that the wall is racist. But the thing is that he isn't the one I'm interested in. I can't, I don't even know what uh, Pence is going to do. Is he going to attack Tim Kaine? Is he going to attack Hillary? I don't know. But, I mean, he, he, you know what? He Just like you said earlier in the broadcast, he definitely should focus on Hillary, not necessarily policy, because that's not what people are tuning in for. I mean, like you said, most people don't even know these people. Right. So they so got to make the case for their own candidate and – you know, I just, what do you think? I mean, that's kind of my prediction well, that they're going to be making him defend all the things that Donald Trump has said. Or and I think it actually might provide a great moment for Pence here because, you know, unlike Trump, who can't help but take the bait every time and, you know, we still love him, he can actually focus on policy. You know, Pence can come out here and retract from some of the attacks on Donald Trump's personality and try to focus on policy uh, he can defend Donald Trump's case that he is a good businessman and not a failed businessman. So I think it could provide a nice opportunity for the uh, Trump-Pence ticket for Pence to focus on the issues and the policies instead of trying to defend uh, Trump's honor or character, which 
we, I think, expect him to have to, um, considering how these uh, debates have been kind of one-sided. Mm. Well, Garrett, what's your prediction? What do you think? Uh, do you think we're going to see some bias on the end of the moderator? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, it, it's, it's always going to happen. They wouldn't pick the moderator if he wasn't a total globalist shell. I mean, Lester Holt is the true replacement for Brian Williams. He just showed that totally. Mm. It is going to be so one-sided. They are going to interrupt him every single time he speaks. They're going to say, well, what about this? Isn't this racist? Isn't mm. this? Uh, uh, try to defend Trump here. Try to defend Trump here. And they won't do that to Kane. Because right. That's, mm, that, that's just his person. Yeah, he's just going to be rolled out as this lovable guy that's kind of right in the middle. Everyone can relate to him, and they'll paint Pence, of course, as this out-of-touch, ultra-conservative Christian white guy. Oh, he's a white male. Garrett, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and take one more phone call. Uh, let's go to Adam in FEMA Region 4. I know you are. want to talk about some dirty tricks. Of course, we definitely saw that in the last debate. Definitely, definitely. I'm waiting to see how the moderator does tonight and if uh, she throws out an Aleppo type question mm. and uh, you know what kind of trick are they going to pull because you know if it was a fair fight between Pence and Kane that he would mop the floor with that castrated freak of, of a politician you know Kane is just nothing you know what I mean <laughs> so um, I'm thinking uh, they're going to bring up the taxes tonight you're going to hear I think you're going to hear a lot about Trump and Hillary and not so much about the vice president candidates themselves. Hmm. Yeah, and that'll be so. interesting, too, considering that neither of them are going to be on the stage. If this turns into a Trump versus Hillary battle of character or history, it's going to be a different dynamic than we're used to seeing because neither of them are on the stage. And essentially, their you know, vice presidents are going to be defending their honor, maybe the moderator defending their honor in some cases. But, you know, that's an interesting point. I don't know if that works well for Trump or not. I think we all want to see Pence bury Hillary just because we can't stand the witch. But um, Ooh, I'm not witch, sure. witch, get out Ooh, the way. Witch, get out the way. But I'm not sure if that's what's best um, for the Trump-Pence ticket right now. Margaret? A little uh, technical difficulty. All right, Adam in FEMA Region 4, thank you so much. And we will be on the lookout for some dirty tricks in tonight's debate as well because... We did see him last time. Um, I'm I'm going to be interested to see if the, the debate moderator actually goes there and says, hey, Kane, you know, everyone's saying Hillary Clinton's on her deathbed. Are you prepared to be the president and see what he says? And if he, that's a forbidden question, we're not allowed to talk about Hillary's health. It's like been the top trending thing. Thanks to yours truly here at InfoWars. But yeah. OK, Margaret, what do you think? I know we talked about some of the dirty tricks in the last debate. Well, hopefully you can hear me. So uh, just looking at <laughs> just uh, the call. gifts that All right. came. Margaret always has the best things to say, but not right now. Okay, we are going to go take another phone call. Uh, let's go to Nicholas in Houston. You also want to talk about the flip-floppers on stage guys, tonight. can you move me? Because I really want to jump in. But I you guys, can you hear me? Go ahead, Nicholas. Standing right, by. All right. All right, I'm actually watching you live on the live stream and I appreciate what you do. So, I think, I think. all right. So I don't hear anyone but you right now, Marcos. All right. Nope. <laughs> all this, right, is, so this is live media. We folks. are live coming at you live right now. And caller, you're going to have to repeat yourself once they get my audio fixed here because it's not coming through to the front studio. Sorry, guys. Live TV. <laughs> Prompt, teleprompter free. Teleprompter free. Right, go ahead, free. Nicholas. <laughs> All right, so I want to know if uh, Mike Pence is going to call out Tim Kaine on his flip flop of of uh, his abortion record because I think there's going to be a debate between a candidate who is pro life and a candidate who is pro abortion. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Well, I mean, I think that's definitely something that they're going to point out that because that was one of the big things that they were coming after Kane initially at the beginning was saying kind of flip-flopping once he moved over to the Clinton camp because of course he said that to placate the voters who were voting him into the um, current position he has as a sitting senator former governor and of course like I said ex-head of the DNC so he has to put up this certain kind of front um, well, this is and this is one area where there's no doubt Mike Pence is not a flip-flopper 
He has been well known as being a very strong uh, religious politician as far as his beliefs in God. He's always been against Planned Parenthood and abortion. So um, this is one where, you know, it's funny because this is a, a topic, you know, abortion, pro-life, pro-choice, something that has been um, dominant in some of the debates for, you know, for the presidential race in, in the past. But this year it kind of just it doesn't really seem to be a big deal. But maybe that hurts Kane if he gets called out on flip flopping. But to me, I think that this is kind of an issue that has kind of just been um, there's so much muddied water now that people mm -hmm. don't worry too much about this. They don't feel like it's an immediate threat uh, to, to the country. The country. Yeah, and right. Personally, you know, I'm going to, I don't either. I really don't. So I hope that they don't get hung up on that because we are on the brink of World War III right now. And, you know, Donald Trump has said where he stands on the issue and, you know, Pence as well. Um, so hopefully they're not going to get hung up on that specifically. And they will be able to come after all the corruption, all the scandal that is sitting on the other side of this is someone that could be uh, your president is someone who has already flooded the government and the prior administration they were a part of with scandal. I mean, even now this just came out with Politico, the Obama DOJ drops charges against an alleged provider of Libyan weapons. So the Obama administration is wanting to dismiss charges against an arms dealer that it had accused of selling weapons that were destined for Libyan rebels, right? And so this trial was supposed to uh, begin, take place right on election day. But of course it probably would have been pushed back um, but this is all they've they're wanting to drop this. They're they're requesting that they can do it quietly, accept a confidential agreement to resolve the case because they don't want to shine a light on Hillary Clinton and Obama and the, the fact that they were shipping arms um, to the rebels. Get, I mean, so this is, it's like more scandal surrounds this woman and it's all in an effort to protect her. This is clearly a case of collusion with Clinton and Obama. This is clearly a case of double standard with Clinton and Obama who want to attack the Second Amendment all day long. But then they'll do arms deals, illegal arms deals. They'll fund and, and arm radical terrorists. They'll be responsible for gun running schemes on the Mexican border, Middle East. So Right. I mean, and this is a, a and this trial was threatening to cast additional scrutiny on Hillary Clinton's private emails as Secretary of State. Well hey, would and you it, rather go to court or die? Right. And it was going to expose so, I mean, the uh, reported to. CIA attempts to arm the rebels fighting Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. So these are more emails that Hillary Clinton would have been, I guarantee they would have been marked classified, but she didn't know what that marking stood, you know, Leanne, what it looked like. So it, it's so, can I add one more thing? It's so, it's so powerful because Gaddafi was loved by the people of his country. I mean, you can see the videos of him rolling down the streets. He's standing up in the car. I don't have a bulletproof vest. He's not in a bulletproof vehicle. People are praising him. They're loving him. And so what does uh, Clinton have to do? She sees that he wants to be a nationalist politician, and she has to come in and kill him. She's proud of that. Did you say you had another point to make, Nicholas? Yes. Um, I just looked at Donald J. Trump's uh, Twitter. He says he's going to be live tweeting during yes. the debate. So I was wondering if you're going to check on those. On he those. says he will be live tweeting the debate and enjoy. He says <laughs> enjoy. We do enjoy Donald Trump's tweets. Thank you so much, Nicholas, for your input. And yeah, indeed, I think we can put you in charge of following the monitor, Twitter. Uh, we monitor Donald who's, who is Twitter? gonna be put in charge, the official monitor of Donald J. Trump's Twitter account. Do you think uh, Clinton will be <laughs> live tweeting this or do you think she'll be napping? She's probably asleep right now, um, you know, or Sleep she's getting a, her IV for the next debate because she's got to prepare, you know, days and weeks ahead of time. Um, which don't forget, we will be here live a Sunday night with the next presidential debate. You're actually going to be in St. Louis, right? Yes, I will yeah, be in St. On Louis. On the ground. So we will be here once again. This is, you know, what are we, 34 days out from do or die time for America. As far as I'm concerned, we are witnessing do or die here for this country. Is it going to be destroyed by the globalists or can Trump get in there and make America great again? <laughs> be interesting to see um so sh do we have miss margaret howell on deck all right well one of uh, i wanted to talk about i know alex threw out a a prize to say anyone that could get on tv wearing the clinton rape shirt you know he was like anyone if you could do it for at least five seconds and <laughs> almost immediately 
someone jumps behind uh, Tucker Carlson was there the other day and he was like, Bill Clinton's a rapist, like running over the barricades there. That was hilarious. Now we have new video, someone else Pete um, Miller. on live television giving a very, you know, great commentary on, uh, you know, the debates and the election. And then, boom, let's go ahead and play the clip. <laughs> failed businessman or maybe he didn't perform very well in some of his business endeavors but i think one of the kind of the things that we really need to be looking at in this debate is that bill clinton is a rapist infowars.com infowars.com bill clinton's a rapist bill okay. clinton is a rapist all right bill clinton rapist so the, the, he he knew that he had a, a minute that's how he wanted to use his time we hear some clapping going around over here um i would point out through, uh, what's epic. her face? The uh, the the man woman reporter there at MSNBC, uh, Rachel Maddow, Maddow. Rachel, Rachel Madcow. He never even heard of us until he watched Rachel Maddow, and she plugged us for an entire show one day. He so got thank some of you, our Rachel products, Maddow. and he was like, "Wow, Infowars.com, thank you, also, Rachel Maddow." This uh, this was a story that wasn't reported anywhere, but I saw it on Twitter. Uh, Bill Clinton was at Ohio University, I believe it was today, and there was a free speech wall. They had a free speech wall. Someone took over the whole wall and spray painted. Bill Clinton is a rapist on the wall. Wow. And apparently, Bill had to pass that wall as he was going to speak at this event. Oh, my gosh. Bill Clinton Did anyone get that? is a rapist spray painted on the free speech wall at, I believe it was Ohio University. I can probably find the image out here. Oh, if my you gosh. Give me a that is incredible. Can. If we could have Bill Clinton standing in front of that sign, that is incredible. I'll let you know when I That's find That's what it the inside there. of his mind looks like, is that, you know. Yeah, I was thinking we should spray paint that on his forehead. That'd be even yeah. cooler. It's uh, can you spray imagine being yeah. Bill Clinton right now? He sends out a cryptic um, campaign email with the acronym stop her on the side. He's got Danny Williams calling him out right now <laughs> saying, I want to shake your hand. I want to meet my father. He's got all of these women in his past that have accused him of rape. He's got all these people now on the streets accusing him of rape. He's falling asleep when Hillary Clinton is speaking at the Democratic National Convention. He says Hillary Clinton is a demon. He says Hillary Clinton um, has, you know, always is passing out and fainting. I mean, Bill Clinton is a wreck right now. But under normal circumstances, this would be the death signal to an entire campaign. But unfortunately, the people that that support Hillary, well, they got the Clinton News Network for no matter what. You know, so it's very bizarre to see that 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 they're not collapsing before our very eyes. The yeah. Clinton News Network has their back all that. day Through long. That. Well, I was taking a walk the other day, and I, you know, a lot of times it gets super overwhelming just trying to fight back against the machine. And the machine is like working overtime, paying everyone overtime hours to work on behalf of the Clintons and the globalist agenda. But then I was thinking how exciting we are all alive right now, and we are witnessing how much of an effect that we're having in real time on this presidential campaign right now. So everyone should hold out hope, be super proud of that. We still got 34 more days in this thing. Um, should we go ahead and take one more phone call? I'm not sure about that. I know we wanna to get to that Jones video um, calling on Donald Trump to visit Haiti and if call out the Clintons. A, uh, but I wanna take a phone call from Thomas, who's he's saying, you know, that might not be the greatest idea. Go ahead, Thomas in Atlanta. Hey guys, all right, so here's my thought on it. Here's the headlines after that would happen. Billionaire heads to poor country, talks about how rich he is. They love to put him down, right? Mm -hmm. So if that happened, and he goes there and he you know, talks about, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do that. The thing is, we already have all kinds of organizations helping these countries out. When we go in and help them out, they screw it up anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time. To politically support them and then back up the small businesses, back up the churches, back up whatever people that want to go there and help them that have the means to do it right so if you're going to go there do it after january 20th 2017 right yeah you have a very good point there thomas uh thank you so much for that let you me know, just say this though guy i think it, the, the the point is that we want to shed light on the whole controversy right most people don't know what happened to haiti how they were completely raped by the clinton mm -hmm. still so, living in so by donald yeah. trump going there it's just everybody's going to be talking about it and trust me he'll be talking about it too every chance he gets the reason why i'm here is because look what these people look how we left them just hanging and we, we, we promised them billions of dollars and and we stole it when i say we obviously i'm talking about the clinton foundation so i think it would shed the light on the whole controversy mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and he would definitely 
I mean, the, the news is really good at, at wiping away all of her scandals and pivoting, but it, Donald Trump has a really good way of making sure it's the news and dominating the headlines. So they wouldn't be able to uh, cut away from the camera if Donald Trump was literally in Haiti, shining a light on just what the Clinton Foundation did not do for Haiti with all of the billions of dollars that they collected. You guys uh, want to get a document cam on this? I got the image thank you, up Thomas. here from the uh, Bill, Kent, Bill Clinton rapes on uh, Ohio University. Here, let's see if we can. There it is. Somebody spray painted this. Bill at Ohio Clinton University. rapes. Wow. There you go. And he Bill had to walk and rape. <laughs> He's like, right this way, there's an arrow, right? I'm with him. There's an arrow. This was he, at uh, uh, Ohio he, University, apparently, where Bill Clinton spoke today. He wants to have access to that Oval Office again. So I don't know what the thing that I just thought was so um, incredulous was Megyn Kelly was talking about the whole uh, beauty queen, the beauty pageant scandal. And Donald Trump called her Miss Piggy because she gained 60 pounds and he's like overseeing a beauty pageant. He's like the boss and the whole thing is about, you know, you're being objectified. And she was like, well, you know, some people might find that kind of objectification of women objectionable. And it's like, first of all, She's it's a beauty pageant. Secondly, Bill Clinton's objectification of women is okay. What is the problem with people? And actually, I was pretty sure that she was the one that made the comment Miss Piggy originally. She was the one that said it first, if I'm remembering the stories, when I went and looked it up, she said Miss Piggy before Donald Trump even said it. Right, but he it, was but it sticking is ridiculous. up for her. It is ridiculous that this is even involved. I mean, 20 really? years later, and, the, and whenever he, he responds, that's another thing she said. Shouldn't the Trump campaign just shut up already about women's weight? And it's like, he hasn't even, this was 20 plus years ago. You're the one that keeps bringing it. You're the one that keeps talking about it rolling this woman out and then forcing him to have to defend himself. It's like, I mean, we're going to attack you, but how dare you defend yourself? That's like owning a professional football team and you've got a player that gets out of shape and not strong and you say, wow, he's weak. He's really let himself go. He's weak now. He can't even lift up a, a muffin. <laughs> oh, my God. How dare you call me weak? Oh, my God. You well, you're a football feeling. player. Don't be weak. Yeah, you need to be strong to go out and play football. It's like, you, right. I mean, I'm sorry. And when you're a beauty, beauty queen pageant, and you Miss Universe, thin. you can't gain 60 pounds after you win the crown. You know, you got to keep it together. It's just you one year. Me, it's one year, man. Keep it together. All right. Well, I see Margaret Howell over there now. Ready to go. Can we finally hear from Margaret? Please, here? Margaret. You can. So I just wanted to give you an update on what uh, Kane took when he was lieutenant governor from 2001 to 2009. This was just sent to me. And 160000 in gifts and money is what he took. 5500 in clothes. Final four tickets. Uh, Caribbean trip. There was an, a Virginia <laughs> investor named James B. Murray that bought Kane an $18,000 vacation. And he, he reported all of this, so it's not illegal to do it, but it really shows you that he uses position for personal gain. And who does that sound like? It sounds just like Hillary Clinton. So Bill you know what? Birds of a feather really do <laughs> flock together because as Lieutenant Governor alone, this man was taking tens of thousands of dollars in gifts. Well, as we've learned from the Clinton Foundation, donations and gifts and things doesn't mean that there's any pay to play going on. Right. It doesn't mean that you're going to do no that quid favors. pro quo. Yes. Correct. If you report it. But we know that uh, that another uh, political um, that his successor, Bob McDonald, you know, he was uh, one that didn't report it. He Actually lost his position because of it but if you report it and you can justify it or show it um, it's not necessarily illegal but it really tells you what type of character we're dealing with here right well i mean the uh, david brock who runs these super PACs that support hillary clinton has been caught laundering money okay so <laughs> i don't know what else we have to do to expose these people we caught you in haiti we caught bill clinton raping women we caught david brock laundering money we caught we the Tim fbi Kane taking gifts every which way <laughs> the fbi the cia now the doj backing you, know you in every single scandal mm -hmm. because and that's exactly that's exactly what i said with all this but the whole reason why they won't go after the clinton foundation they won't go really after her emails is because she is going to take so many people down with her well, you know what, So though? many people. I have to say, and we're going to play this Haiti video, but it's got to be tough uh, for President Obama to know all about this when he's on the golf course. Yeah. So I don't blame him. He's He's got a, he's got a 18 holes he's got to play tomorrow. He can't be concerned about this. He's got to figure out the dog leg uh, uh, on uh, 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 four. Do the, 
do the uh, swag. Uh, 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 this I is a WikiLeaks. Uh, 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 we're going to uh, 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 par three oh, do, 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 uh, Barack do, do, Obama. Okie doke. And they were doing like the, some swag dance on the, the White House lawn yesterday. You know, it was like very, very important stuff going on while we've got, you know, Russia and uh, U.S. talking about nuclear war, for instance. You know, it's fine. Let's just go and have fun and invite Leonardo DiCaprio to come on his private jet and lecture us all on climate change and tell us that we're crazy. Well, I want to go ahead and, and go to this Alex Jones report. It's it's key. I think we're going to go ahead and play it again um, after the debate. Uh, but this is his call to Donald Trump to expose the Clintons on Haiti. Devastated in 2010 by one of the worst earthquakes in Caribbean history. It took only a glance to see what the rains did to the largest camp in Port-au-Prince. Estimates vary, but up to 200,000 people have lost their lives. New details of a possible influence peddling in the aftermath of the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, which we all remember very well. There were hundreds of homes who were destroyed after the earthquake, and the people are still hungry. They have no food, no job, no homes. This is not right. The Clintons, Hillary Clinton, should be behind bars. Now, Hurricane Matthew has slammed into Haiti at over 145 miles an hour, creating unbelievable devastation. The whole world has given billions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation for the Haitians. Not only... Not even 2% of that money went back to Haiti. Haitian leaders have already taken note of the fact that Donald Trump has been exposing the Clinton crimes in their nation. So, Mr. Trump, we are asking you, begging you, the Haitian community will side with you if one day you ask Hillary Clinton publicly to disclose the audit of all the money they have stolen from Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake. They're calling for you, Donald J. Trump. They're begging you to come to their island nation. We need somebody like Donald Trump in the White House to make America great. So other countries around the world will respect America again. Mr. Trump, you've been on the cutting edge of exposing the Clinton Foundation and how they robbed Haiti. Out of all their crimes, Haiti is clearly the worst. Tens of millions of dollars raised and less than 10% actually delivered to the starving people of Haiti. More than 10,000 Haitian children then died because the United Nations effort led by the Clintons gave them poison fetid water. Even the State Department's own data dump has letters from Chelsea Clinton, the Clinton's daughter, saying, please, you've got to do a better job. Children are dying from cholera. We've seen something in Hillary Clinton beyond hubris. We've seen an almost mechanical disconnect. A little over a month ago when she refused to go to flooded Louisiana and Mississippi, Donald Trump went there and was on the spot and delivered food and aid to the people and talked to local leaders. As I speak, Haiti faces an even bigger threat than the devastating 2010 earthquake. Hurricane Matthew at over 145 miles an hour has smashed into the island and is sitting over it, wreaking mass flooding landslides and huge amounts of death. The Clintons publicly led an international movement that in total stole close to $2 billion of aid money that was meant to go to Haiti. And now six years later, they've almost rebuilt nothing. And Hurricane Matthew shows the horrific cost of what the Clinton Foundation has done, parasitically bleeding this Caribbean island. In 2010, the president of the Haitian Senate, Bernard Sansarik, was there when the Clintons reportedly tried to bribe him to cover up the fact that they were stealing billions of dollars in donations. In the words of the former Haitian Senate president, the Clintons exploited Haiti's earthquake to steal billions of dollars from the sick and starving. The American embassy called me, as it was often the case, and then said, President Clinton has a messenger for you. I said, send him over. He came, did not give me his name, but told me, Mr. Sensory, you join our movement. You side with Bill Clinton in this invasion and will make you the richest man in Haiti. I said, sir, Tell President Clinton for me, Bernard Sensory is not for sale. 
I have principle and I love my country. A week later, by executive order, Clinton revoked my visa. I was then a resident of the United States. I am now a citizen of the United States. And you know, when she raises this money, every time she raises money, she's making deals. They're saying, could I be the ambassador to this? Could I do that? Make sure my business is taken care of. I mean, give me a break. All of the money she's raising, that's blood money. I'll be honest with viewers. Donald Trump has always been one step ahead of me and my listeners. That's why he needs to be our president. But I'm just here to give the moral support to make sure that Donald does what he knows is best and some of his advisors don't block this idea because it's the right thing to do to help Haiti. The Clintons have already robbed them of billions of dollars of donations and it shows that America really does care and it shows how presidential Donald Trump is to fly in, not days after the hurricane, but right behind it as it blows out tomorrow. Come in, land. Give them a donation, give them food, rally good aid organizations that have good ratings online for giving almost all the donations to the Haitians and support a true rebuilding in that country. And announce that your organization, the Trump Organization, is going to investigate building a hotel or tourist attraction in the nation. Show people what you've done in the business world. Show people true business investment in Haiti and a true helping hand in the midst of their crisis. Then Hillary will counter saying you should be in the U.S., not in Haiti. Once you've shown a spotlight on what's happening on Haiti and gotten the people of the world to pour out billions of dollars that I predict will come in in the next week with your leadership, you will then be able to move on to the United States and help with the damage that's taken place from the hurricane that hits the East Coast. In my view and from my gut, this is the right thing to do because Haiti has been absolutely used and abused by the Clintons. It's an international scandal. It's something that will really wake up the voters to how cold-blooded this Clinton crime family is. And it'll bring real aid to the Haitians. And you'll be able to expose the crimes they've committed while making right what's happened to the Haitian people. This is such a no-brainer, and I guarantee you, folks, Donald Trump was thinking about it before we were. But we've got to make sure via Twitter and via Facebook and other platforms that he knows this is the right move to make. You know he's going to be on the East Coast when it's hit by the hurricane while Obama's playing golf and Hillary's taking a nap. But he needs to go to Haiti because they've been so screwed over by the woman he's running against, Hillary Rodham Clinton. In closing, some of the best special forces in the world are SAS in Britain. And their maxim is, fortune favors the bold. Well, our fortune is building a great economy, turning loose the engine of liberty, and empowering humanity, something we know Donald J. Trump believes in deeply. There's another maxim, and that comes from our own army, and that is in Latin, liberate the oppressed from the Green Berets. Donald Trump and the Liberty Movement is all about liberating the oppressed. And if the people of Haiti aren't oppressed, nobody is. They are oppressed by the Clintons and limousine liberals, and Donald Trump needs to come and begin the process of freeing the Haitians and rebuilding Haiti. America, led by the Clintons, screwed over the Haitians. It's time for Donald Trump to reverse that. I'm Alex Jones, signing off for InfoWars.com. If you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web. Because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action.